What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome start to your week. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in the green today for the most part. We are having a nice start to the week. Some of the altcoins in the deep green today. Bitcoin still sort of going sideways. We had a nice little break to the upside. We actually got all the way down to about $8,900. The bulls came in, pumped Bitcoin back up, but yet again, we are hitting some resistance. So in today's video specifically, I want to talk about whether or not Bitcoin is in fact still bullish. I want to talk about sort of the stock to flow ratio. Some people say, that this model is totally flawed. There's no way Bitcoin is going to hit some of these higher levels. Some people saying that Bitcoin has lost its steam and we're actually looking for a massive $1,000 Bitcoin candle relatively soon. Will it be to the upside? Will it be to the downside? Well, I do want to talk about that. We also do have some other news that came out today. Kanye West, you may have heard he's running for president possibly and uh, you know he is a bit of a Bitcoiner. Also want to talk about this guy right Right here, he is a billionaire, and uh, some people are saying that he may be looking to get into Bitcoin. He is a very influential character in South Africa. We'll talk about who he is, what's going on, whether or not this news is something we should be getting excited for, and if all of that sounds good to you, well, that's what we're doing today. Also, it is Monday, which means Ledger Nano giveaway day, so drop a comment down below in the description, I mean, in the comments, and uh, you guys know I do pick a random winner. We'll pick a winner at the end of today's video. Without further ado, we're going to dive directly into the charts. So having a look at what's going on right now, we were actually forming a potential descending wedge inside of this channel. We actually broke out of it, but as you can see with the two green lines parallel right here, Bitcoin has been sort of stuck in this channel, bouncing back and forth. So we're only a couple hundred dollars away from hitting the top again, which is around the $9,400 level. Now, if you guys watched my last video, I showed you how there's basically $15 million worth of asks on Binance alone, which means that they are looking to sell at these positions. If Bitcoin was to fall back down again, you are looking at the mid to low $8,000 levels. But should we be getting bearish on Bitcoin? Has been kind of boring, right? Well, as I'm making this video right now, you can see on the daily chart, Bitcoin is starting to push above the basis of the Bollinger Bands, and we know that these guys are looking for a massive explosion. This is the tightest, most boring consolidation, lowest volatility we've seen in Bitcoin in literally multiple months, and we know that something big is coming. Now, we are sitting above um, you know, some of these averages, However, on you know the daily, uh, you can see that we did have our golden crosses, which is good. Um, for example, over here though, you are looking what Cactus said. He's talking about expecting that thousand dollar candle soon enough in either direction. Um, obviously, price action is insanely boring, but he says that this could indicate what we could be expecting for Q3 and Q4. And I just want to point out right here that on the four hour, Bitcoin actually is sitting underneath the 50, 200, and 100 moving average. Now, this is a lower time frame, okay, with Bitcoin. You really want to zoom out because Bitcoin can do these crazy, crazy moves on the lower time frames. But I just wanted to point that out that lower time frames looking a little bit more bearish, higher time frames looking a little better. For example, you have Sing Sorrow over here saying, really curious to hear about this impending doom and gloom you guys keep talking about. Now, you might think that's a little bit of a cryptic tweet. Well, he's basically talking about this ascending triangle that we have right here. Now, I'm not saying that Bitcoin's going to do exactly what the textbooks say, but you can see right here, if you just go over to stockscharts.com or really just look into any traditional, uh, you know, technical analysis, you can see ascending triangle is a bullish formation, which usually forms during an uptrend, okay, which we did have an uptrend right here where we bounce back from our Black Thursday event. Uh, Black Tuesday event. And you can see right here, they say there are instances where ascending triangles form as reversal patterns at the end of a downtrend, but they are typically continuation patterns. So for the most part, these patterns signal consolidation before another major move to the upside. Lots of Bitcoin bears out there though. Price action gets boring. People say we're going to be going down. You can see right here though, 
if we do look at basically not the ascending triangle, but just this wedge formation, if we look at right here where Bitcoin touched down, we had this dip right here, almost like this uh, kind of almost triple bottom that we had before we had the blast off to 10,005. Right here, you could see that there was a lot of consolidation right before Bitcoin actually broke through that resistance. And since then, it has acted as the support. Now, having a look right here, we are sitting at that $9,300 level that I spoke about a while on the channel. And Bitcoin needs to break out of this. If it does, our next resistance, if we can get above the previous wick and we stay on this ascending trend, is actually closer to the $11,000 level, which would be a pretty incredible move for Bitcoin. And not only that, but if you guys follow Henrik Zedberg, he's been a bit of a Bitcoin bear, saying that, you know, basically he's been very bearish on Bitcoin. Let's say that. And uh, yeah, just today, he puts this tweet out and he says, Bitcoin not breaking down, RSI starts to look bullish. Not saying he's going full on bull, but we do have a Bitcoin bear who's basically been pretty negative on the Bitcoin price just today, kind of changing his tune and saying, hey, things don't look that bad. So that could be a situation. Also, not to mention, now, if you do want to talk about the negatives, because we got to look at both sides of the equation here, Bitcoin's 10-day real realized volatility uh, dips to 20%. Now, data analytics firm SKU, you could actually see from their chart right over here, they said that the last time that this happened, we had a major capitulation event where Bitcoin did dump all the way down to $3,100. Now, was this circumstantial? Was this just based on, you know, things happening geopolitically in the market? Well, that could have been, but also it could have literally been something that we need to take into consideration. Now, on the flip side, okay, because we're going to show both sides of the coin, pun intended, um, Bitcoin's 90-day active supply has reached its pre-2017 bull run level, pointing to a possible bullish phase in the future for Bitcoin. Now, according to this report from Stack Funds, Bitcoin ended its Q2 uh, basically on a strong note. They say holders or hodlers, whatever you want to call them, continuing to consolidate and adopt a long-term investment strategy. We saw a massive amount of Bitcoin leaving the exchanges. Now, to quote the report uh, specifically, they say prior to the 2017 and 2019 bull runs, both of them, first one went to 20K, second one went to 14K. They said basically there was evidence of steep surges in the 90-day percentage active supply. These occurrences tend to peak for a window of 60 to 90 days before Bitcoin's induced price rally is realized. So this spike in active supply has historically pointed to a run up in Bitcoin's price, which these guys basically believe could happen sooner than later. So we were discussing the other day about a potential fake out dip. Now, I don't know if this was the fake out right here down to 8,900 or if we're going to go down to some lower levels like the $7,200 level that we spoke about for weeks on the channel. But regardless, I either see Bitcoin going up from here or having a flash crash, freaking everybody out, going down to 7,200 before starting a major multi-month to potential year of a rally. Now, that's just my opinion. I'm just a crazy guy on the internet. You know, what do I know? But that's just basically what I've been looking at, what the signs have been pointing to. Now, stock to flow model creator plan B, he did put out this tweet and he said, do you think Bitcoin will reach $288,000, $100,000, $55,000, or less than $55,000 by 2021. Also, let me know what you guys think. I will drop a poll above if polls are even still working. I know YouTube's been a little weird lately. Or just drop a comment below. Do you think by the end of next year, essentially, that Bitcoin could hit $288,000? Um, will it be more around 100, 55, or less than 55? Well, according to this poll, 42%, 42.5% of people think that Bitcoin is going to still be below $55,000 by the end of next year. Now, I wonder if that's because of current sentiment or because people truly believe that. Because you have seen a lot of people come out basically saying that the stock to flow model is flawed. We had a good run while it was going, but basically now that's not the case. But I mean, honestly, if we actually have a look at where stock to flow is, it's kind of sitting right where it should be. And also keep in mind, that Bitcoin doesn't usually tend to catch up on the model right away. You can see the model usually does have these crazy spikes, right? Because it's based on basically the stock 
to the flow or the supply versus the demand, essentially, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, you could see that Bitcoin usually trends under it for a little bit and then eventually meets up to the level. In fact, if we zoom back here, you could see that we had multiple red dots, like we just painted these few right here, that sat well under the level it was supposed to be before actually getting back to where it was. And that actually took several months to get back to that point, right? But an even more interesting chart, uh, not just talking about Bitcoin, is obviously having a look at the altcoins. Um, now, you guys know how I feel on the channel. I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist, but I hold basically just Bitcoin. Um, I do use the altcoins occasionally. I'll try to make some trades on them if I can. Uh, long-term holds for me, not really too big on long-term holds for altcoins. Although, actually, there are some altcoins, I'm not going to lie, that I would consider to be potential long-term holds, like I would keep my money in for multiple years, possibly. If you guys want me to make a video on long-term holds, probably a very short list, but I could I could make one of those videos for you. Um, but yeah, I mean, having a look right here, you can see that Bitcoin dominance is breaking down below the 65% level. And interestingly enough, if we zoom in right here, now look, altcoins literally got held down uh, on the total market cap right here, which is sitting at around 91.3 billion. But if we do have a breakout to the upside, you could see, you, you think altcoins have been rallying, you could see a massive altcoin boom, alt season. I mean, we're right there, guys. We're sitting right at that level. And you can see the last time we broke something like that, we actually got all the way up here. And, you know, from bottom to top, you had a 122% uh, rally in the total altcoin market cap. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't have smaller altcoins doing much better. Obviously, there's some low cap gem out, gems out there that could 5x, 10x, but the overall market pumped over 100%. So that's pretty incredible when you think about that moving forward. So that's basically the analysis for today. But I want to talk about a few things. And uh, oh, first of all, guys, I'm sure you know by now, but um, Kanye West, he tweeted this. He says, we must now realize the promise of America by trusting God, unifying our vision and building our future. I am running for president of the United States 2020 vision. And Elon Musk tweeted and said, you have my full support. Now, if you haven't seen this clip really quick, it's like 39 seconds long. This is from Aaron Arnold. He's one half of the crew over at Altcoin Daily. He did a nice compilation. Just going to play this clip for you guys super quick, and then we're going to get to the rest of the video. You're acting in love. You're like a drop of water, and you have the ocean as your army. When you act in fear, it's just you and your money. Now, you could take your money and put it in Bitcoin, put a credit for it, put it in cash, or all your cash, and then, and then stand up to the ocean, and who's going to win? We definitely are dealing with racism, but I want to push future concepts. You know, now I'm doing, I'm giving you two streams of consciousness in one. I want to talk about my wife. I also want to talk about Harriet Tubman on $20 bill. We're following you. We're following okay. you all. You said it, I'm good. I'm that sorry. was the moment that I wanted to use Bitcoin, and I saw Harriet Tubman on $20 bill. So lots of people are getting excited about this, right? Um, are you going to vote for Kanye West if he runs for president in 2020? We'll get into more discussion about that if it actually happens. Also, guys, I wasn't sure if this was a joke or not. I'm thinking this is serious. It looks like Brock Pierce also is actually looking to run for president as well. Um, so where's John McAfee and all this? He dropped out, right? So lots of uh, potential cryptocurrency supporters running for president this year. Um, unfortunately, we did have Andrew Yang drop out. Now we had some really big news for Cardano fans. Cardano's been pumping a lot in the past few weeks. Um, basically, IOHK signed a custody agreement with Coinbase for Cardano. So they say as of Q4 this year, all of ADA holders will be able to store their assets in Coinbase's custody, institutional grade, battle-tested cold storage, while also maintaining the ability to delegate their stake. So this is big news for Cardano fans. Also, you know, VeChain has been doing quite well. There are some rumors about VeChain potentially being the next coin listed on Coinbase. They're just rumors as of right now, but um, I guess we'll find out sooner or later. If, you're, if you are a VeChain holder, congratulations, and Cardano as well, been doing quite well. But check this news out, guys. Now, this is from Phantom. You might be familiar with them. So basically, their blockchain tech is going to be used to trial, um, basically using for, um, to track 
uh, like pharmaceutical products and stuff like that in Afghanistan. Now, you guys know that one of the most practical use cases of blockchains is supply chain tracking and logistics like that. I've always actually been a huge fan of that on this channel. I think it's a very realistic use case, blockchain voting, things like that. So essentially right here, basically what they say is according to the World Health Organization, one in 10 medical products is either substandard or totally falsified. In fact, I was on Reddit and somebody verified the fact that they do have a really big problem in Afghanistan with these um, sort of non-regulated or falsified, you know, or fake drugs, essentially. So basically, you could see right here in a bid to try and rectify issues within the Afghan healthcare industry, the Ministry of Health is set to commence trialing on blockchain-based smart medicine pilot programs using Phantom's blockchain and their mainnet opera. So you had Michael Kong, he's the CIO. He basically said Afghanistan is very interested in using new and emerging technology such as blockchain to solve some of the problems that they face internally. Given that counterfeit medicinals are a huge problem for Afghanistan, we signed an MOU with the Ministry of Health to conduct the pilot program. So basically, they're going to be rolling out smart medicine pilot programs that are going to last for two to three months. Um, they're doing it with three companies, Royal Star, Nabros, and Bliss GVS as well. And check this out. So you had Dr. Gullum. Uh, Sayed Rashid, he's very long title here, the executive director of National Medicine and Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority of the Ministry of Public Health. Sounds pretty official to me. He says this program is the first application of blockchain in Afghanistan. We are so happy to be applying this into the health sector to stop counterfeiting drugs by market. Phantom also is going to uh, provide the labels. I told you guys how this works. You basically scan it, etc. And yeah, they're going to be tracking hand sanitizers, basically over 80,000 products, whole different things, chewable tablets, foot cream, stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, this is really cool. And you know, this is the kind of things that get me excited. Like when I see these real world use cases, sometimes I feel like a lot of use cases for cryptocurrencies are very like niche. Like it's just in a bubble. They're just dApps that people in crypto use, but seeing real world adoption like this, being used with, you know, these different blockchain products and blockchain services. This is really what it's all about, guys. So that was definitely some interesting news of the day I wanted to point out. But unfortunately, it's all not sunshine and rainbows for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because we do have uh, a not so good story. We have Will Breed, the South African national accused of stealing up to 16.3 million from around 2,000 investors from his Vault Aid Solution scheme, now claiming he's gone bankrupt, which is not good for those investors. It looks like they probably won't be getting their money back. Um, now, basically, this was promising weekly returns on customer deposits through crypto mining and trade and accepting deposits starting from just $50. The scheme investors had allegedly received only 1% of the expected gains. Who knows who's telling the truth? Who knows who's lying? But it looks like this is another unfortunate turn of events for crypto investors. So as usual, guys, you have to be very careful with cryptocurrencies. It still is the wild, wild west out there, even though we are getting a little bit more regulation. Be careful what you're investing your money in. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose and always expect that there could possibly be an unforeseen exit scam. Um, yeah, I mean, like nobody really knows. You know, I'm a guy on the Internet. Don't trust me. You know, I look at products. I think they're great. I could be totally wrong. You never know what could happen, so always do your own due diligence. And uh, Alex Mashinsky, I just wanted to point this out, this tweet kind of just kind of got in my head this morning. So he was saying, hey, DeFi, if you look closely, you'll see that compound, compound finance is fractional reserve banking on chain. The entire world economy and the livelihood of 7.5 billion people are threatened by this practice. And yet here we go propagating it again instead of replacing it. How not exciting. Lots of people are further decentralized. You see DeFi versus CeFi, right? That decentralized finance versus centralized finance. But here's the thing. Even if we do move to a decentralized model of finance on the blockchain, but we're still doing these things like fractional reserve lending, banking, which is a big problem right now, which is why if everybody tried to pull their money out of the bank right now, we couldn't because there's only about 10% of our money in the banks. And I think recently some of them are even getting away with 0%, which is crazy. So let me know what you guys think about that. Is DeFi truly the future? But if we continue to just do things that we do in the traditional system, but in a decentralized way, is that really sort of changing the structure of how things are right now.
Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm very interested. And I do want to end on this one story. And basically, this is, um, I might say his last name wrong, but this is Patrice Matsep. Basically, he's a South African-born lawyer and mining billionaire. Not Bitcoin mining billionaire, just regular mining billionaire. He's also the founder of African Rainbow Minerals in 2016, which has interest in gold, ferrous metals, base metals, and platinum as well. Now, there have been some rumors circulating that Patrice and his endorsement um, and or that he's been investing in Bitcoin and other various Bitcoin trading technologies such as Bitcoin Profit and Bitcoin Evolution. Well, it looks like after some deep diving, this is false. This is a rumor. Unfortunately, um, could he be investing in Bitcoin secretly? Possibly, but there are no official um, investments or endorsements involving Bitcoin. So just kind of wanted to squash that rumor before we move on. And, uh, yeah, that's about it for today's video, guys. Kind of random today. I mean, if Bitcoin sort of just stays range bound, not too much to talk about, right? But we do have to give away a ledger. So, uh, yeah, we had four videos. I know last week we were a little slow on videos, had a lot of stuff going on too. Plus Bitcoin was boring. Let's be honest. So, uh, that was video number three which uh, was the Bitcoin potentially winding up for a big move. Um, did we get our move? No, we did not get our move yet, but I still think it is winding up. It is consolidating. Usually after these boring periods, we do get a big move. But anyway, random pick for the ledger, Nano S. It started Q2 so low, it was only bound to go up if you are in the know. Well, Kyle, you are the winner of the ledger. Any comment on any video makes you eligible. However, Kyle, if I do not hear from you in 24 hours, we're giving this away to another person. So if you want, you know, you can hit me up in my official about section right here, or you can hit me up in my Telegram. My, also, my Telegram group is totally free. If you guys want to join, we hang out, talk crypto all day. All the links below in the description. Thank you so much again for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I do this. Not so much every day anymore. I'll be honest. I have taken a lot of time off, but it's been so boring, guys. I mean, yeah, there's been some altcoins popping off, but Bitcoin has just been freaking hanging out, doing absolutely nothing, waiting for some excitement, waiting for some big moves. I think we're going to get them. I think it's going to happen pretty soon. I'm looking at probably by July, midway, July 15th, I think we're going to have the big move, hopefully before then. But I could be wrong. Could be, we could just go sideways all the way to December. Who knows? That being said, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. My name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.